Hello everyone and welcome to War Diary 2 War Hero Story and welcome to the first mission for the Koreans, the Battle of Chungyu. Toyotomi Hideyoshi, commander of the Japanese invasion forces, landed in Korea. The vanguard of the army has already captured Busan, and more forces arrive on the peninsula as we speak. We have to stop their momentum. General Sinrib has been dispatched to Chungyu. We must stop the Japanese. And our job is to defend our base until friendly forces arrive. And here we are, we start right in the middle of the battle, but this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Because we have a nice base here, we do have some towers here as well. And I defend the base until friendly forces arrive. Reinforcements will arrive in 20 minutes. However, if Sinrib is killed, we will lose this battle. There we go. We do have our fairly standard late to mid 90s RTS setup. So we do have our HQ here, which will produce workers. So let's produce a bunch of those. And we do have resources here. We've got wood. We can mine gold here. We can also mine uh, metal. We do have war as a resource and we do have food. Food is a bit of an interesting thing. So it, it works like it did work in the original War Diary in that if you run out of food, all your units will lose health. They won't die, but they will let's build a couple of archers here if we can. Well, I guess we're going to run low on, on, on gold here soon. But if you run out of food, your units will lose health. They won't die, but they will drop to one hit point. So ultimately they will come, become pretty much useless. We do have to our stand units here. We do have pikemen or trident men. And we do have archers. We have two barracks here and we do have this archery range here. Or at least this is a building that uh, grants you access to archers. We do have uh, Shin Rip here, or Sin Rip our hero unit and he is a general he's just like the the melee guys except a lot stronger the japanese of course have arquebuses as they did historically and or at least they did historically have them in great hand numbers than the koreans and sinrip can switch between bow and sword it's actually quite useful because with the bow he is i think he's slightly weaker but he also has a way better survivability and he does recover health over time as long as he has food but we nevertheless don't want this guy here to die so let's get some more lumber i don't actually think i need that much uh, that much of this ore here so instead let's just check out our build menu we've got this beacon mount here the beacon mount will give us some some extra extra vision here and as you can see, the the game is isometric, and it is for the most part what you expect from an like Age of Empires style game. You've got you've got resources you need to harvest. You've got worker units, and the worker unit. Oh, did they actually kill my worker there? I know they didn't. The workers ran away. Probably sensible. You do have siege weapons. You do have mounted units that are faster. You've got the the mix between melee units that are stronger and range units that are a little bit weaker but are ranged. And you do have a couple of extra mechanisms here. They did scrap the. Fortunately, they did scrap the or the equipment mechanic for the most part, which is good because that one was kind of terrible, to be honest. And I, I, I will not miss it. So here we have the beacon. As you can see, we have now more vision. And the fog of war will stay away here, so that's pretty sweet. Other than that, we can build a new HQ. We don't really need that. And we could build... We could actually build more towers. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get some additional towers. That's, that's going to be useful. This map here doesn't have any additional food, so if we run out of food, we do start with a decent amount, but if we run out of food, then we're out of luck. And as you can see, there's, uh, we've, got a, we've got a time limit here, they don't show it to you, but the, the time here on this speed here is pretty much real time. It, it runs a little bit slower, but it's, it's not really all that relevant. As you can see, this guy here is recovering because we do have food, so we don't want... We don't want our troops to get too hurt or just build too many of them otherwise we'll run out let's build a couple more towers here we also have walls the enemy tends to avoid those which is both good and bad in some games it means you can just wall off the enemies in other games it does mean that you can just uh, essentially turn it into a tower defense game just gate them off 
Also, you should actually work here, please. Thank you very much. And was I yeah, I was building more guys here. Let's get yeah, let's get even more of you. And the, the Japanese do get reinforcements here from two different sides, which means that you can't. There's no base you can destroy to stop them. They just get off map reinforcements. And oh, you're actually destroying my my tower here. Yeah, at least you're attacking it. Now the sword guys don't seem to do that. They seem to go straight for your. Where are you? Where are all of you going? Just just calm down. Calm down. And just stay here for now. We're going to clear out the map, but we're going to do that possibly after all of them arrive. Or maybe we can just do some raids in between. We'll see. We do have extra gold here, but as said before, our... Oh, look at that statue. Our... Oh, this... Uh, I actually think this just should still be fine. I think, maybe. Maybe we should get some repair. Repair peasants over here. And then we can clear some radars. Yeah, the, the Japanese do get off my reinforcement, but they also have some like fixed units on on the map and probably should try to clear those out. There we go. So these Arkabusas here are... They are fixed. The Arkabus has... Uh, these are all resources. The Arkabus has a lower range than the boat, but it I think it does, but it's more powerful. Where... Oh, you're just... I don't know what, what you're doing there, but you can, can join me here. Ooh, got more statues here. And where was that worker? Oh, there you are. So you can fix that uh, that tower. You can join me here. And look at that. I've got some more for you guys here. And then let's maybe yeah, let's kill you as well. There we go. And everybody gather here. Where's that worker? So you're here. You know what? You will actually join me here. There we go. The game does have a couple of non-standard mechanics. There's a season mechanic. And different seasons have different effects on the map. So these these waterways here, there can be... Not really waterways. There can be... Also look at how, how nice and angular these rocks look. There's more Japanese troops. Uh, let's hope... Yeah, that should still be okay. Even if they kill one tower... Uh, we should still be able to to get to get out of here alive. It's just one. We can always rebuild it. So let's get over here and some more guys to kill. And that guy didn't even manage to strike me. Sweet. More of you guys. Yeah, as you can see, this this first mission here is pretty much. Uh, oh hey, look at you. It's pretty much a not really a tutorial, but it's oh hello. Actually, let, let's stay here. Let's, let's get them, get onto them from... Let's take the high ground. I'm not quite sure whether the high ground gives you any advantage. Why can I not attack that guy, but that guy can attack me? That is odd. Anyway, let's just go down there and kill everyone. Yeah, this is one of the spots where the where the Japanese get reinforcements. So one thing I should probably talk about is how this is a sequel to War Diary 1. It is actually quite different. And it does keep some of the mechanics, but it's even it's closer to Seven Years War 2 again. And everybody's dead. So you just stay here. We're going to something going to do something quite mean. We're going to build a bunch of towers here. Because I think that's an amusing way of handling this. We're also going to have these guys stay here. As you can already see the the melee guys have a way shorter survivability than the range guys, but that's fine. And there we go. Then let's build another tower here. And let's maybe have you take a step back so you can just gun down these guys without having to take any hits yourself. Because that sounds pretty good to me. There's more enemy troops here. Don't know why they sent a, a lone guy down there, but that's that's okay with me. We go. You, you don't. You you didn't even attack me. You put. You just you just stood there and took. Took the arrow. Do we have? Oh, there we go. So we do have enough resources for that. Sounds good to me. And about we have lasted about half the time we have to last. So for the most part, I think we're just going to. Oh yeah, there we go. So it's winter. That's a rather jarring transition. As you can see, this is frozen now, so we can cross that 
with water. Oh, and they killed my worker. Oh, why did he do that? Why did he do that? You know what? It's okay. I'm gonna send another one up there. Uh, let's just hope this one here doesn't get intercepted by Japanese troops. If he does, it's okay. And what did I want to say? Oh yeah, so it's winter now. So we have this nice uh, winter winter landscape now. I've got snow in the buildings. It looks pretty sweet. And the water is frozen, so you can now just walk over it. Of course, if you do that and... Oh dear. And dead. Okay, you will take out that guy then. And dead. There we go. Is there anybody else just lurking around here? If you have troops on ice and they... And the ice thaws, then they're just going to die. That's that's as easy as it is. So you don't want to do that unless maybe maybe you can get the AI to do to accidentally kill themselves. I think it's unlikely, but you never know. We do have quite a bit of oh I think this is clay. Good thing we've got clay or lumber, food and and gold if I remember correctly. There's a fair amount of resources and you need different resources for different things. The resources are a little bit tiered. You do have you can finish that please. You do have gold as a requirement for the low level Korean units, occasionally with wood. But it's not a it's not a super hard requirement. The and it does Oh there you are. So it does differ from faction to faction, so the Japanese have uh, different stuff they need for their troops and the the two sides are they are fairly different. So I don't think we have any, yeah, we don't have any of all those stones left. So do we have any here? I think so. Occasionally it's not quite clear what resource is what here. In any case, we might, I think those, I will see. Do we have any of those left? Is anyone gathering here? Let's, let's keep an eye on those guys. Yeah, so that is, that is more stone, so that's fine. We've almost harvested all the gold here. We could build more forces, but we don't really want to if we do that. We might just burn through our food faster, so let's not do that for now. And let's just have maybe one of you guys. Oh yeah, you can harvest harvest more resources here. There we go. I kind of like the snow effect. The, the flakes they move with the screen, so it's not as not as good as it could be. But it's actually kind of nice, and a lot of games don't have that at all. So overall. Yeah, always a little bit longer. Overall, it's actually uh, kind of sweet. We can fix this, please. Yeah, so that does cost me the resource I initially invested here. That's that's fine too. Did we? Oh yeah, we need 200 stone for that. Well, we'll get there. No worries. And the game does actually support a fairly high resolution of 1024 times 768. It's not super high, but for its time, it's actually quite decent. I think those were probably the largest screens people had in the last, last late 90s. Some people had higher resolution screens, but they're probably the exception. Other games don't su support that at all. Interestingly, the first War Diary had a fixed resolution because it was a DOS game. And it's not like all DOS games had that, but many did. Let's just have these guys stand here and su and, and support my, my worker here. And the first Seven Years War had a had a resolution that could actually be changed. And then the second seven years well, f did the StarCraft resolution f fix, so to speak. And why did you just stand there and took the arrows? Well, never mind. And now this game here does offer different resolutions, but Seven Years War 2 didn't, but the first one did. Should probably explain the history between Seven Years War and War Diary. Seven Years War, so there was the original War Diary, the DOS game, that was developed by Triggersoft and HQ Team. Then both companies went their separate ways and it's independent sequels to the franchise. So the the game here, and there we go, season change, here was made by Triggersoft. And that's the official sequel to, to War Diary. And there we go. Friendly support units have arrived. The Japanese will stop attacking the base. So let's Let's just worry about everybody else, provided there is anybody left, and there's not, and thus we win. Yeah, was, what I want to say is that the HQ team went on to make Seven Years War, then made also Seven Years War 2, the sequel, and also made an expansion pack for the sequel. That's why we have got five of these 
games about the Imjin War. But anyway, we won this battle here. That wasn't too difficult. And it gives you a nice introduction to the green side. You pretty much start with all the tech you can get. But it will get more interesting next time. Thanks for watching and see you then.